it was getting dark as I took food out to my dog Charlie in the backyard. I hated being outside at night. Seriously. I believe in ghosts and witches and all kinds of stuff that my mom always makes fun of me for. It's just her and me living together, and she makes me feed Charlie as part of my chores. I'd like to see how she feels when a street criminal gets me one of these nights. She'll cry over my casket at the funeral about how she wished she'd never made me go outside at night. I was so busy imagining that, I nearly jumped out of my skin when Charlie started barking. I looked around but didn't see anything. Must be a cat or something. I told him to be quiet and gave him his food. Then I heard a rustling behind me. I gasped, searching the darkness. Nothing. As I walked back to the house, the wind rushed through the trees, and Charlie barked again. I was getting so freaked out now. Standing in my yard, half hidden by the bushes, was a nun. I'm not even kidding. A nun, silently staring at me. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I repeated over and over, backing away looking around for anything I could use as a weapon. I had a creepy ghost nun in my yard, and now she was going to murder me and hide my body where my mom would never find it. I screamed for help, and the nun turned and fled into the shadows. My mom came running, asking what was wrong. I started to tell her, then I realized if I told her I'd seen a nun, she would definitely think I was crazy and probably have me locked up. So I said I thought I'd seen a person in the yard, she said it was probably my imagination and to go to bed, but I know what I saw. The next day at school, I couldn't wait to tell my friend Tara what had happened. I thought she'd be so freaked out, but she just laughed at me and said I watched way too many horror movies. By lunchtime, other people at school had heard that I thought a creepy nun was stalking me, and they were teasing me too. Nobody believed me. That night, I couldn't sleep. I pulled the covers over my head, so afraid that if I looked, I would see the nun standing over my bed. I didn't really know anything about nuns. My parents used to be religious, but my mom never went to church anymore. All I knew about them was from movies. I decided I had to face my fears, and I went outside. I looked all around the yard, but no one was there. Over the next few days, I started to relax. Maybe the nun had been my imagination. Tara continued to tease me about it. Any more visits from the creepy nun? I was starting to get mad at her. Sometimes she wasn't a very good friend, and sometimes she can be really mean. I didn't have any other friends though, so I hung around with her. One night when I was feeding Charlie, he started barking again. I turned, and there was the nun, partly hidden in the bushes. I resisted the urge to scream, just in case I was crazy and hallucinating. What do you want? I demanded. She stepped forward. Jenny, she said, don't be afraid. I started screaming like a little girl for a moment. Okay, I was beyond freaked. How do you know my name? Come closer, she said. Uh, no way. But something about her made me want to. I'd been thinking of her as an old, scary looking woman, but now I could see she was younger and actually kind of pretty. She told me that her name was Mary and she was my godmother. Huh? She'd been my mom's best friend, but they'd had a fight many years ago and hadn't spoken since. Mary had joined a strict convent where she wasn't allowed to visit friends or family, but lately she'd become so lonely that she started sneaking away from the convent. I wanted to meet you, she said. I haven't seen you since you were a baby. Why not just call my mom like a normal person? I asked. She said she wasn't sure my mom would ever forgive her or let her see me. Please, she begged. This has to be our little secret. At first, I was like, no way. How did I know she was telling the truth? What if she was actually an undercover criminal? But part of me was really excited to have this secret. I got so bored living with just my mom. No friends except Tara, who I didn't even like most of the time. Now, I could keep this secret from mom, and it would serve her right for keeping Mary a secret from me. Mary and I talked for a little bit. I asked questions about the convent. Life there sounded so strict. Why don't you just leave? I asked. She said she had made a vow to God, and she couldn't break it. I saw a light go on in my mom's bedroom, and I realized I needed to get back inside. Mary asked if she could visit me again tomorrow, and I said yes. She gave me the number for the cell she kept secret from the convent. 
Mary started visiting most nights. I would tell her about my boring life, how my mom never let me do anything except chores, how Tara was mean to me. Mary was a great listener. I expected her to be uptight, being a nun and all, but she was actually so fun to hang out with. My mom noticed I seemed happier, but I wouldn't tell her why. It was my secret. One day after Tara had been teasing me again, Mary asked if I wanted to play a prank on her. Late that night, we went to Tara's house. I showed Mary which window was Tara's. Mary went to the window and started tapping with her fingernail. I was trying so hard not to laugh. Finally, Tara's lamp went on and I could see her sit up in bed. The expression on her face when she saw a nun at her window was priceless. She started screaming her head off. Mary and I ran as fast as we could home, where we collapsed with laughter. The next day, all Tara would talk about was the creepy nun visiting her and how it was probably an omen that she was going to die. She was such a drama queen. After school, I texted Mary that my mom was running errands for a couple hours so she could come over. She wasn't sure she would be able to sneak away from the convent right then, but about half an hour later, she showed up and I brought her into the house. She looked around like she couldn't believe her eyes. She stared at the photos on the shelves, especially the ones of my mom. I miss her so much, she said. She admitted she didn't really like life in the convent anymore. She missed the real world, and she was sad she hadn't gotten to see me grow up. Why don't you try talking to my mom, I said. It's been years now. She'd probably forgive you. But Mary said she wasn't ready yet. I told her about the terrible day I'd had. I'd flunked a quiz, and Tara had ignored me to hang out with more popular girls. Mary cheered me up in no time. I realized I've never had anyone like this in my life before, someone I could rely on to always listen to me. We were so deep in conversation, I didn't even hear the key in the door until it was too late. Suddenly, my mom was standing in the doorway, staring at Mary like she'd seen a ghost. Mary and I both leapt to our feet. Mary stared at my mom too, and I held my breath. What would happen? Would they fight? Or would they finally talk it out? Of all the things I imagined, I definitely didn't expect what Mary said next. Hi, mom, she whispered. I thought I misheard. Why would my godmother call my mother mom? My mom wasn't saying anything, so I started talking. Why didn't you tell me I had a godmother? What did you guys even fight about anyway? Can't you just make up? But my mom didn't answer any of those questions. Instead, she said to me, she's not your godmother, she's your sister. I couldn't speak, could barely even breathe. How could that be true? I turned to Mary. What is she talking about? I asked. You're not my sister. But Mary just kept staring at my mom, tears in her eyes. And that's when I knew it was true. How could they both have lied to me? I didn't know whose betrayal hurt worse, my mom's or Mary's. I have a sister and you didn't tell me? I shouted at my mom. She closed her eyes, took a deep breath and started to tell the story. She and my dad had Mary when my mom was very young. They'd been a very religious family. When Mary was 18 and I was just a baby, Mary got pregnant and my parents disowned her. My mom still wanted to see her sometimes, but my dad sent Mary to a convent and told her never to come back. For years, Mary had lived in the convent, never seeing her friends or family. She had emailed mom once, letting her know that her baby had been born and adopted. Mom wrote back and told Mary that she and my dad were raising me without telling me that I had a sister. Writing that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, my mom said, but it was what your dad wanted. But what dad had done broke up their marriage and caused my mom to lose her faith. She stopped going to church and she and my dad divorced. She said there were so many times over the years where she wanted to tell me about Mary, wanted to invite Mary to come back home, but it seemed too late. She thought Mary would hate her forever. Mary was crying by the time the story was done. She said she wanted to come home. They talked like I wasn't even there and I felt myself getting madder and madder. My mom said that if Mary decided to break her vow to the convent, she could come here and live in the guest room until she found a place of her own. Yeah, right, too little too late. I couldn't hold it in anymore. She can't stay here, I shouted. You lied to me, I hate you both. Then I stormed upstairs and shut myself in my room. I cried most of the night. 
This was such a huge shock, and I couldn't believe that my new friend, the person I'd come to trust so much, was just as much of a liar as my parents. I never wanted to speak to either of my parents or Mary again. Mary texted and called the next few days, but I ignored her. At school one day, Tara apologized for making fun of me about the creepy nun. She said she was still scared every time she went to bed. I remembered playing that prank with Mary, and I almost smiled. But I knew I should tell Tara the truth. I told her the whole story about Mary, hoping she would be supportive. But when I was done, all she would talk about was how crazy my family was, and how it was like something from TV. She wasn't really interested in how I felt. She just liked what juicy gossip my life was. That's when I realized I didn't want to throw away my friendship with Mary. I had wished for a sister my whole life, and now I had one. I didn't want to forgive her, but maybe I could at least give her a chance to explain. So I called her that night and we talked for a long time. She said she'd lied because she knew if she told me she was my sister, there's no way I would keep her visits a secret from my mom. I didn't know what to do, she said. I just felt so alone, and I couldn't stand the thought that I had a sister out there that I didn't know at all. I wanted to meet you without causing drama. Well, you caused a lot of drama, I said. I know. Do you think you could ever give me another chance? I knew this wouldn't be easy for any of us, but if my mom was willing to try to let Mary back into our lives, then maybe I could try too. You're my sister, I told her. That was so weird to say. We're family. That seemed to make her really happy. You're my sister, she said back to me. She promised to visit mom and me the next day. I fell asleep still hearing those words. You're my sister. Maybe now she and I would both feel less alone in the world.